Hi everybody, Timmy MX here and today I want to share with you a very special technique to get a Technicolor look in DaVinci Resolve. But first let me quickly explain something about Technicolor process. I'll keep it short and I don't want to explain all the deep stuff about these techniques because that's too much for a tutorial like this. And I try to explain it with simple words. The first misunderstanding about the original Technicolor process is that it's not a pure subtractive process. It's a mix of subtraction and addition because the colors cyan, magenta and yellow are finally added separately as a dye layers. The Technicolor process originally used a beam splitting optical cube in combination with a camera lens to expose three black and white films. The light beam was split into three parts as it entered the camera, one beam favoring the red portion of the spectrum, one favoring the green and one the blue. Each image was captured simultaneously on a separate band of black and white film. The three strips were developed separately and printed, after which the prints were passed through the appropriate colored dyes. When laminated together, they produced a reasonably faithful approximation of natural color. In a later version of the process, only one integral 3-pack color negative film was exposed during filming and three color separated negatives could then be made from this. These three color separated strips were appropriately dyed and then superimposed on a final emulsion to produce a full color image. You can find great sources with deeper explanations on filmcolors.org or eastman.org for example and you can find some links in the description. What was interesting for me is the process of projection because there you can learn much about how the pictures were created. And here is some very interesting fact. In the beginning around the 20s there was two color subtractive camera used. This camera used a beam splitting prism behind the lens to divide light into two paths. Half was filtered red and the other half green. These two color records were then captured onto black and white film and above the other vertically flipped. Because this technique used only two color separations, the process was incapable of replicating accurate blues, purples and yellows, all through pleasing result could be obtained with careful color coordination. That's the reason for this very reddish greenish look in the early years. You can replicate this process in DaVinci Resolve, uh, but that's not the topic of this tutorial today. Today I want to share with you a technique to achieve the Technicolor version 4 look because in this later process version Technicolor 4 we have a three strip where the final layers were added on each other and that's a big misunderstanding about Technicolor because it's not only subtraction. You can read a very interesting talk about Technicolor on Wikipedia where this misunderstanding is discussed and explained. You will find the link in the description too. So let's finish the theoretical part here and let's jump over to the node tree. I will break down all the steps for you. In the first two nodes I did my exposure correction and balanced out some things to get a great starting point. You know, color correction as first step is the key. Then I created three nodes, each for the three color channels. The first one is my red, below the green and on most bottom the blue. And here is the first difference in comparison with other methods out there for DaVinci Resolve. I don't preserve the luminance and I achieve the black and white by the representing output of each color channel. So on the red channel node I decrease all the green and blue and increase the red on the green and blue output. On my green channel node I do the same thing for my greens and on my blue channel node 
again the same. Now I created on each channel another Zaria node and decreased the gain on my primaries to the half or in other words to 50%. And that's it. This 50% nodes are our starting points for the contrast to boost the saturation. You know the relationship between gamma and color saturation, but with the gain we really get the color contrast out of it. I'm starting using a layer mixer for every representing color channel just by switching to the subtract composite mode. And in this mode every pixel on the second input is subtracted from the input above. In this case, all you have to do is putting the origin color into the first input and the half of the first remaining color into the second input. So for the red color node channel, just grab the R node output and connect it to the layer mixer. Then grab the 50% node output of the green channel and connect it to the second input on the layer mixer. On the blue layer node, oh, sorry, on the blue layer mixer node, we connect again the origin color blue itself and on the second input we connect the 50% red node. Now I've added a Zaria node on each representing color node channel and after that again a layer mixer node. So you can see each node channel on this three strip represents one of our process channels for the output. The Zaria node between these two layer mixer nodes is just for representing the output of the layer mixer node before because you can't connect two layer mixer nodes directly. That's the whole reason. So now comes the addition part. On each of the second layer mixer nodes, you must switch to the add composite mode. And here on the first input, we have the result of our first layer mixer node connected. And on the second input on the addition layer mixer node, we connect the 50% color of our three colors. In other words, the red output is calculated by red origin in 100% minus 50% of green plus 50% of blue and corresponding to Z, the green output is calculated by 100% green input minus 50% of red and plus 50% of blue. And finally, the blue output is built up of the subtraction of 50% red from the 100% blue input and the addition of 50% green. And that's all the math behind it. For sure, I've tried this with a split or combiner nodes to separate the color channels this way, but the math behind the split or combiner works different and I've stumbled across some issues for which I haven't found a solution. So I decided to do it this way. But anyway, we are almost done. After every add layer mixer node, I've created the representing Zaria node and decreased the red on the green output and blue output to zero, just leaving the red on the red output channel untouched. And again, the same step on the green channel and the blue channel. The last step is to connect all together by using a layer mixer node with three inputs by connecting our node channels in the same order as we split it them up. On top of the red, the middle input for the green and the most bottom for the blue node channel. Don't forget to switch the composite mode on this last layer mixer node to add because now we have to make an addition for the R and G and B values. And know what? That's it. All you have to do is to save your work and if you want to make some final adjustments as I did here in my last node, all I've done here is to increasing my saturation a bit, but not too much as you can see in the vectorscope. 
And if you now look at the image, we have achieved this very saturated colors look by keeping the blacks and whites as clean as possible. You may say, hey, looks normal, but that's wrong. It's exactly the Technicolor 3 strip look if you want so. And now you are able to do this by your own. And if you want, you can export this whole thing as a LUT, for example. Let's see what we have so far. If I turn all these nodes on and off, you can see the difference between the corrected and bit balanced image on the beginning and after that three channel splitted node tree. Now you got the solution for a very clean and technically spoken near correctly technique color look. And as always, there are some other ways out there to achieve this look too, but some of the known solutions create great images, but some ugly noise too, which destroys your quality finally if you apply a noise reduction. With this technique, you will get a really clean image without noise or other problems. Don't misunderstand me, please. There are other great solutions and tutorials out there to achieve this Technicolor look. And some of them are much easier than this technique. And I don't say that this technique here is the best and only one. You can try to create this look too, just by normally grading your image. But this way is, general, is a general approach, which you can simply apply to every footage maybe as starting point or as it or as it is what it is as, as a mathematical solution uh, simulating the technicolor process i know it's very tricky and a bit confusing but everyone does the specialists too believe me you see it if you simply read a bit in this technicolor talk which i linked in the description and last but not least a very important hint I don't want to explain this technique deeply. I just want to share this result with you. Or in other words, now you can achieve this look by your own. You use a car too without the need to knowing how exactly the engine works. Okay, I hope I could show you by breaking down this note tree how you can get a very clean Technicolor look which is almost exactly to the Technicolor version 4. To get a really great result, you should take care about your color correction on the beginning, but you can achieve a more dramatic look by simply applying an offset, for example, in your color correction too. Anyway, we are done now. And as always, if you're interested in more content like this, please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for watching and listening. You all a great time. Bye.